I'm Craig Payne. And I'm Angela. One of the things that actually started us growing in our faith was meeting mm -hmm. in college. Had a desire to, to grow our faith, so I, that's one thing I know that, that God did was to bring us together for us to make each other better. Mm -hmm. um, getting married, moving out here, um, being new, living on our own. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we spent a good while, six, six months, months yeah. trying to find a church. You know, that was one way that we started um, making connections with people and growing relationships mm -hmm. and growing in our faith and just building upon those relationships. One night before bed, um, as we were going to bed, the way Craig hugged me and kind of the way his arm landed on my stomach, all of a sudden I was like, something feels weird. I didn't, other than that, didn't really have any symptoms. And so I scheduled a, an appointment with a family practitioner and um, I had a tumor the size of a football in my abdomen. It was stage one ovarian cancer. Um, and so they removed the tumor and they removed one of my ovaries, but they decided given uh, my age and apparently the way that the other one looked, they left the other one in for hopeful fertility purposes. A year after finishing treatments, um, we had found out um, through a routine checkup, mm -hmm. one of your oncology visits, that um, some of her numbers were a little elevated. Some of the numbers they used to check and see, you know, if cancer could still be present. And so there was concern there, but one of the things they said was, sometimes it can be thrown off if you're also pregnant too. Um, found out we were pregnant mm -hmm. and um, they were really, really excited about that. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I just shared with, with a few people and um, I don't know if it was a week or two, maybe after that. Mm -hmm. I had a pretty early miscarriage. Mm -hmm. And that was uh, tough, tough to know, tough to go from <laughs> cancer, you might not survive. <laughs> now you're surviving, we don't know if You'll be able to have children, you're pregnant, you're, you've lost a child. I remember somebody in a devotional forever ago, but those words kind of stuck with me of, we didn't know what the future held, but we knew who held it. And that was for us what kept us, our heads above water, you know? Mm -hmm. One night in our small group Bible study, a newer couple had attended, and during sort of our time of sharing prayer requests, this um, new gal, she shared a prayer request of a gal who found out that she was pregnant and was pursuing adoption. And as she's kind of sharing this prayer request, I can vividly remember um, just feeling God saying, I, I, I don't know what it looks like mm -hmm. at all, um, in what form or function, but I feel like we're supposed to be part of the story. Craig and I kind of talked about it and he felt the very same nudge. And so I messaged my friend, the gal from small group and kind of said like, this is totally weird because we don't even know each other very well. Um, but as you were sharing the story about your friend, um, we just felt like I kind of shared, you know, God's prompting and um, they had asked us to write a letter, kind of just like, who are we? After that, we ended up meeting and they really enjoyed the letter and mm -hmm. felt like, um, you know, sort of the things we like and who we were, were, um, we were sort of a mutual answer to mm -hmm. prayer. So on a, October 14th, uh, 2014, mm -hmm. our son Lucas was born. Mm -hmm. You, t you talked about, you know, we always imagined having kids and mm -hmm. and we debated how many and when and, mm -hmm. and we we had pretty grand plans, mm -hmm. um, but nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was way better. <laughs> yeah. The better thing never, you can ask or imagine. Never, really. never imagined yeah. how wonderful mm -hmm. 
this could this could be. Mm-hmm. 